Today I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial how you can improve your audio with some post effects in Audacity. Coming up, roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. So this is going to be a very quick tutorial, I'm not feeling very well so please excuse any mistakes if there's any. You guys know how to download and install Audacity, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of tutorials online. Once you download and install it, there's also something else you need to do and uh, it's a couple of libraries you have to install. So you go to edit, go down to preferences and then you're going to see there's a a lame library and a FFmpeg library. You can use the functions here to locate and download them and once you download them you have to add them. If you have any problems about this let me know. I'll point you to the right tutorial from start to end in terms of adding the libraries. Okay, I've already got some audio imported here but I'm going to start again just to show you. Now um, just some settings here just to get familiar with Audacity. Up here you've got a monitoring level for your audio. This is the recording level and this is the volume level. And you've got a few um, keys here. And those are the buttons to stop, play, pause, uh, etc. Um, right now we're not going to be recording uh, directly from Audacity but we're going to import an audio into Audacity. So a couple of ways to do this. You can uh, go to File and uh, Open. Okay, and you can look for your audio wherever it is. Mine is currently in a video right now and it's here. Could have, so I can select that for example. I know I want to import this. All right, it's going to ask me to make a copy. Uh, it's much safer. You can press OK. But the other way you can actually import would be to just drag it from your folder. And I'm dragging from a different screen right now and drag it into here. And again, it's going to ask you the same thing. Right. Okay, uh, the first thing I'm going to actually do is make a copy of this. So we're going to keep the original and then uh, the improved post effects so we can uh, hear the difference. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to select copy. I'm going to add a track stereo. We've recorded in stereo and I'm just going to paste that here. So now we've got a copy. You, I've used uh, Ctrl and V to paste, but you could also have used this here. Uh, to paste okay um, so what we're going to do is work with the copy and uh, we're going to mute the top one so we can have a comparison later now at this stage what I tend to do is I always tend to save this file as uh, in a couple of ways first thing I would go is save project and I will say save project as and I'll go and put it in my folder just to be organized so in here I would usually call this audacity audio and I will call it unedited all right this is just to be cautious just in case I lose the file the computer switches off and I have a copy and I can go back to the original uh, unedited version okay the first thing to notice is that we are working in 48,000 Hertz okay and uh, usually the recommended uh, audio output to work with is 32-bit float, which is the highest for uncompressed versions. But if you're doing something for YouTube, you're not really producing anything too professional, you shouldn't worry about this too much. But if you can choose 32-bit float or 16-bit float or whatever, it's fine. Uh, here, the, when we made a copy, it defaulted to 24-bit, which is not a major issue. Okay, So don't worry about this too much. You can always change that in the format here and select 32 bit float okay we'll leave that as there for now okay um i've recorded this from a zoom h1 recorder and we were using a microphone the mic jk044 recorder input at 60 and uh, obviously 48,000 hertz and 24 bit okay now let's just play this first because i know i made a mistake and uh let's just play that so i'm currently <clears throat> so i'm currently right so this bit i made a mistake I can actually take it off but before we do this we're gonna actually do it from up here let me just X that unmute that so I'm currently so I'm all right I'm just gonna select this just by clicking and dragging and I'm gonna press delete so I don't want this bit and check I'm currently speaking into the JK mic J044 microphone plugged into the zoom hedge one at 60 gain input 
48,000 Hz and 24 bit recording. All right, so that's fine. As you can notice, the wave lines are quite low at the moment because I'm not speaking very loud and the gain input was quite low as well. Okay, so now again, um, I'm going to just make a copy. I can just double click on that, select copy, add a track, stereo, and we're just going to press Ctrl V, or you can just press that down here and it adds the same thing okay so you can also name them as you can see here we've got audacity audio right uh, you can name them or rename them so what we're going to do is rename this we're going to call this as uh, um, we're just going to call it copy okay so we'll work the, with the copy so remember I saved it earlier as a project so I'm just going to save it now just to make sure that um, you know we don't lose anything okay so I'm gonna mute that that way what's gonna happen this is now grayed out when I work down here so I'm currently it's not gonna affect above alright okay so the first thing that you should do when you record an audio obviously environment plays a big part your equipment the distance of recording uh, from the talent to the actual microphone etc but a clue is to keep some seconds before the recording so that you can actually uh, take this as background noise and uh, remove it from the whole audio recommended is about 20 seconds but at least do 10 seconds and uh, that should work fine so we have left all this here as a background uh, noise to take off so I can actually um, get as close to possible as the start of, wa of the wave uh, line and select all this bit and I'm going to go up here to effect and I'm going to go first noise reduction just to get the noise profile okay that's the first thing noise profile right and then once I've selected the noise profile I'm going to select the whole track so I can click on here or alternatively you can also double click on the track itself right and then you go here again and you go press noise reduction again now there are some uh, um, targets here I've push this down all the way to 3 uh, as noise reduction db and sensitivity at 1.5 and frequency smoothing bands at 1 the default is not that the default i think is 6 and then 3 here and then probably 3 here something like that okay but the least um the numbers are the least changes you're going to make to your audio and it will sound a bit more natural when you add the effects so I would suggest you play around with that uh, if you are using the um, strategy of keeping some uh, time before you start recording to remove the noise and you have a decent microphone and decent uh, environment for recording you can leave this as little as possible okay some people would even not touch that they will not remove any background noise because uh, maybe they have a quite decent microphone which is very good for noise cancellation okay right so now um, you can you can uh, repeat or copy my um, format if you want it's up to you so I'm gonna press now ok and what that's gonna do is gonna remove those background noise that you heard from here it's gonna remove that from the whole of the track ok All right so that was the first step now next step what I tend to do is I go up here and this is selected as well do you remember this it's we go up here and we're gonna normalize the whole thing right and uh, I've left the normalization at minus 1.5 db the couple of ticks here is remove dc offset and normalize peak amplitude to minus 1.5 db and the normalize zero channels independently i have not selected i used to do this at minus 1.0 as well but i found that minus 1.5 actually works better for my uh, context so it's up to you to kind of uh, play around with it it's audio is quite subjective so we're going to normalize this and what it's going to do is kind of raises all the wavelengths, okay, a bit more, give it a bit more volume, all right. At the same time, as you can see here, it has actually um, picked up a lot of the background noise and made it more prominent as well, okay. Right, select it again. So that was a normalization, or that was step number two. Step number three, I tend to compress the whole thing, add some compression. So we've got up here compression and you can copy the settings but usually my threshold is about minus 12 db noise flow is about minus 40 db ratio 
2 to 1, attack time 0.20 seconds, release time 1 second. The default, you could leave it as default, that's up to you, but this is my setting and you can also tick this make up gain for 0 dB after compressing, okay? And we'll press on OK. So now it's going to add some compression. Next thing I'm going to do now, after compression, I'm going to go and put some equalization. Now, so the only equalization which I actually add uh, currently is Bass Boost, which you can uh, drop down the menu here and uh, select that. But I've done mine one between 6 and 9 dB. So let's let me give you an example. Um, this would be the Bass Boost that's selected. This, uh, I think if you flatten the whole thing, this is without any equalization, okay? Um, so if you give it some bass boost, it's currently about uh, 9 dB. So you can click and drag to whatever you want. I tend to leave it between 6 and 9, which seems to work okay for me, you know, subjectively. So you can press OK and uh, add that effect. And uh, you can choose to add any other one. Like for example, you can add some uh, treble, treble boost as well. But I've noticed for me, if I do add any treble boost, it will give me a bit more sibilance, which is the S's. So I tend not to like that anymore. I just keep it as um, kind of uh, unnamed, which is between 6 and 9 for the bass boost. Okay. Once you've selected your equalization setting, you can actually give it some name. So for example, here you can press uh, save here and call this, for example, bass boost uh, 6, 9. Okay. In that way, you can easily select this at any time. It becomes a preset for you. Then I press OK. It gives it a bit more kind of uh, this radio quality uh, bass, very deep uh, effect. All right. OK. Now, after doing this, I want to normalize this once more. And click on Normalize. Leave all the settings the same. And then for the last bit, I want to limit the whole thing so we go to limiter now i used to do at minus four okay but i've recently changed to minus eight so it's a hard limit and uh, first one is at zero input gain zero limit was minus eight and hold ms at 10. you can copy the same settings i can show you the difference between minus four and minus eight so let's put it as minus four and uh, if i click ok what it's going to do is going to cut the top and cut the bottom to give it a level so it's not going to go any be, uh, any uh, beyond that, right? But I've, I tend to notice that I used to have a lot of peaks still quite up. So we're going to undo this by pressing Ctrl Z. And I'm going to actually uh, select limiter of minus 8, which I prefer these days. And pressing OK. So that way, hopefully, it's going to give me a lot more... Uh, there you go. You see, there's a difference. There's a level uh, which is kind of more uh, kind of concise, more close together. Now, I'm happy with this. The wavelength, they look okay to me, but we're going to test the audio. So come here and press play. So I'm currently speaking into the JK Mic J044. Right. While you're checking the audio, you also need to check and monitor for the green up here. If it goes to red, that's a bad thing, it means it's peaking, you've got it too loud. And uh, as long as it stays in the green, it's fine. A little bit in the yellow should be okay. So again, so I'm currently speaking into the JK Mic J044 microphone plugged into the Zoom Hedge One. Right now, we can actually do a comparison with the original. So I'm going to mute that. Unmute this one. So I'm currently speaking into the JK Mic J044 microphone plugged into the Zoom Hedge One. And uh, we can uh, check this again. So I'm currently speaking into the JK Mic J044 microphone plugged into the Zoom Hedge One. So there you go. I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, you can see the difference between the original before the post effects and the after. Now, depending on the actual size of your wave and how we recorded it, you could also give it one last normalization here. So let's just try that. And uh, unfortunately, what I can see is speaking way too high. Okay, so we test it. So I'm currently speaking in... Right, you can see it's peaking and uh, that's not going to do, so I'm going to undo that. 
So now the last thing to do would be to export this audio and uh, a couple of ways to do this. I tend to double click on this and I will go up here. First thing before I'm actually going to export this, I would save this project. Now this is the edited project. So I'm going to go save the project as and I'm going to call it the same name, the Audacity Audio, but this time I'm going to call this edited. This is just something I do. I like to keep a copy of the unedited and the edited version so I can always go back if there was any problem. Obviously, obviously you should always back up as well. I tend to back up these um, projects. Right, so now this is the edited copy. Now what I tend to do now is, um, we've, I've just noticed I left it at 24-bit PCM. It's not a major issue. Um, I could have gone down here and uh, format this, change it to 32-bit. Um, not really a main issue, okay? So now, this was recorded at WAVE, okay, not MP3 or MP4, so which is the highest uncompressed uh, format. Obviously, we're just uh, small YouTubers, we don't need to make uh, kind of very high professional quality audio recording at this stage, but it, it doesn't hurt to learn this stuff. So I select it and I go File and I tend to go Export the selected audio, okay? So then it's going to open a new window and uh, I need to give it a name. So right now it's select, you can export as many different formats. So right now it's selected as an M4A AAC FF MPEG, which is a very popular format, but you've got a drop down menu here. You can uh, export it as wave 16 bit, 24 bit, 32 bit float. And then there's MP3. There's, there's all kinds of formats you can choose. Obviously for the highest uncompressed, um, a very popular one is wave 32 bit float PCM, which is fine. And make sure you're in the right folder. I'm probably not. I want to select that and go to better audio, Audacity audio. So Audacity audio edited as a WAV file, 32 bit float PCM. So we can just click on save and uh, everything is, unless you want to put any metadata on here, any statistics up to you, but I'm going to just press OK. And now that has saved in my folder. And uh, the last thing to do, obviously, is to import that into your video editor and Bob's your uncle. So there you guys have it. Um, there's one more thing you could actually also do. If you didn't want to export the whole thing, um, you could always kind of just select that only. And, uh, and again, you go to File, Export, and Export Selected Audio. And only this bit is going to uh, be exported. Obviously, if you chose export the whole audio, then it's going to export the whole thing as an audio, uh, not just a selected part. Okay, so that's a difference. And uh, but I tend to leave this because this is supposed to be synchronizing with my video. Uh, so it, I tend to export the whole thing, and then on the video editor, I would remove that. Okay. So there you guys have it. That was hopefully a bit easy for you. Do remember these tutorials, especially for audio, is a very subjective thing. What you may like, I may not necessarily like. There's a lot of effects you can play about with and other people may do it differently. That's what I tend to do. And still I'm not kind of the um, optimum uh, level that I need to be. I'm still experimenting, but this kind of works for the most part. And uh, one more thing you can actually do if you've ever done this and you still find it's a bit low, you can always also raise the volume. It's always better to, um, if you do any pause, to uh, to record at a lower volume and gain, and then you can increase the gain and the volume later on. Like right now, you can actually increase this gain here. I'm going to show you. Let's give it some gain for about like um, maybe 10. And now we're going to play it again, and you're going to see it's going to go a bit more um, loud. So I'm currently speaking into the, as you could tell, we went into the red, not good. So we're going to uh, undo that. So I'm quite happy with this level right now. So I'm currently Stays speaking into the, into the JK around minus 12. So about minus nine, you know, anything between minus six and minus 12 is fine as long as it doesn't go anything beyond. So guys, I hope this was helpful. So thank you so much for watching. And I'm sorry if this was not very exciting today. Um, I'm not feeling very well. And I thought I'd just do this very quickly. It's a very easy video for me. If you've got any questions, leave me in the comment section below. As usual, you know what to do. Go to my channel, give me some likes, some comments, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And also, if there's any affiliate links, please use them to help me out. Once again, this was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time.
Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.